would get a little little preview. Ash Wednesday is going to be the 17th. So I'd like to finish up Joshua next week because Ash Wednesday is going to be at Cambridge Lutheran and it'd be tough getting from Cambridge Lutheran back here. Okay, so then on February 24th, we'll start out our Bible study with uh, Lectio Divina. Uh, and if you guys remember that from last year, it's about a half hour where we read um, some scripture three times and we pause between the readings to to reflect on it and to focus on it. So we'll do that for the first half hour and then maybe for the next hour or so we'll go through a couple chapters of Mark because we're going to go back to the New Testament after we finish Joshua to go get through Mark and I think that's perfect that we'll be in the New Testament during Lent. I think it's, it's just incredible the way God worked that out. Okay, so Joshua chapter 12 guess what? We get to read about all the kings that were defeated. 31 kings and their countries were defeated, and we get details of every one of those kings. So, chapter 12, gone. What's the Sea of Galilee is highlighted? Oh, um, because in Jewish, in Hebrew, it's Kinnereth. Oh. It's called Ooh. Kinnereth. Kinnereth. Yep. Okay. Chapter 12, gone. Chapter 13, okay. So, seven chapters from 13 to 20. Is that Tom coming in? Yep, Tom. All right. All right, so we'll take a couple minutes with Tom. The arts have the boring options to make your house feel like your home. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Tom. He, he just... Thanks for the commercial, Tom. Howdy. Howdy. Hi. Hi, Tom. How you feeling? Hi, Tom. How are you feeling? your name, but where are you? I'm at Heartland in Galesburg. Heartland Care. We Heartland Care in Galesburg. We hope you're doing well. Well, a little bit every day. It's a slow, slow process. It's a slow process. But the pain gets a little better every day, and I got a 72-hour pain patch on, and I can have four narcos a day, and I haven't had to take many, too many pain pills recently, so it's just a slow, slow process. Good, good, good. So, patience, patience, patience. Yep. Right, right, right. To catch everybody up, Tom fell in front of his house a couple weeks ago, broke his arm and his pelvis, that's why he's in rehab, and that's why he's in so much pain. That's a <laughs> right. Those are a lot of bones to break, Tom. Uh, and, yeah. And, and well, that's what I would, I would expect that from you, Tom, because you do things very well. Yeah. Uh, I think, Gene, didn't you break your pelvis? Did, did I, didn't you break yes, your pelvis yeah, when you were hit by yeah. the arm? My pelvis in my leg and, yeah, the end of my L4. Mm -hmm. Gene really, Jim, I really got a, serious, a tuck and roll serious class for everyone. Yeah. Gene yeah. was amazing what she went through. Except well, God is good, all those prayers. Pants. That's right, I agree, Gene. My shoulder's stuck on the asphalt. My mm. Mm. Tuck and roll is a one. <laughs> all right, so Tom, we uh, we just went through chapter um, Joshua chapter 12 because there's really nothing there except the list of the 31 kings <laughs> that have been defeated. So now we're in Joshua 13. And the next seven chapters describe how the promised land would be divided among the remaining uh, nine and a half tribes of, of Israel. And the tribe of Levi, of course, would not receive anything because their whole job is to work for God and to keep the temples up and, and everything else. So they couldn't focus on farming. But they did have animals, so they got a lot of uh, land for grazing, which we'll hear about in a little bit. Um, the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and half of Manasseh, remember they were given land east of the Jordan, because on the way to the Promised Land they told Moses, we like this land better. And then they struck a deal where these two and a half tribes would make sure that they fought with the rest of the Israelites, and then they could go back. So those two and a half tribes are on the east, and then uh, the rest of the tribes would settle on the west. Um, 
and verse 1, we're told when Joshua had grown old. Now, it's estimated that Joshua was between 85 and 100 years old at this time. Hmm. And we've got, which is remarkable considering he's still fighting. So, um, we have a, a supplement called How Old Was Joshua When? And it kind of it kind of allows us to track Joshua through the Bible and see his different ages, how old he is. Um, and we know he lives to 110. We'll get that in, in one of the later chapters. Pastor? Yes, sir. In verse 1, when the Lord said to him, you are now very old, and there's still a lot of land to be taken over, has he said anybody else being that old like Moses? 85 wasn't old to uh, them, but maybe to me. Yeah, and remember, how old was Moses again? 110. Ha Moses was 110? Oh. Or was he 140? Oh. Moses was... Huh? I think 140. I think, I think Moses was oh. 140, and remember, when Moses was 140, we're told in the Bible that his eyes were still Google clear, mm -hmm. and he was still strong. So... Yeah, 85 doesn't seem that old compared to Moses and, of course, compared to the, the other guys in the Old Testament. But um, after the flood, God didn't allow people to live as long as they did before the flood because I think God was just kind of fed up. He saw how we get progressively worse as we get older. 120. 120? Okay, so I give him 40 ex 20 extra years. Mm -hmm. so, go ahead. God can be... Uh Politically correct, if he wants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's earned that right. He's earned that right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bu, 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 bu. So yeah, so we can track Joshua's age. Um, let's see, and then it gives us a listing of the territories. In verse six, as for all the inhabitants of the mountain regions from Lebanon to Misrapoth, Maine. Uh, that is, all the Sidonians, I myself will drive them out before the Israelites. So God's going to take care of the rest of the lands, and the Israelites don't even have to worry about going to war. God's just going to take care of them. And then he says, Be sure to allocate this land to Israel for an inheritance, as I have instructed you, and divide it as an inheritance among the nine and a half, the nine tribes and half the tribe of Manasseh. So, okay, so Jacob had 12 sons, so there's 12 tribes of Israel, and then when we add the tribes of the verses of 7 and 8 together, we get 13 tribes, don't we? Yeah. Okay, so we add... Um, the three and a half and the nine and a half and the thirteen tribes. Where did an extra tribe come from? The Levites. No. 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 It was Joseph's son, was it not? Right, Joseph's sons. Bravo! Good job. Because remember, Jacob adopted the uh, the two sons of Joseph huh. when he brought them in. That's right. And he said, "Okay, these kids are. I want to treat them just like mine." Every other child you have after these two, you got to worry about. They don't get a share of the inheritance. So that's where we get 13, people, yeah, 13 sure. tribes now. Yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, the Lord did adopt the Levites. Yes. So they were back to 12 when the Levites didn't get any land. Yep. Because the Levites, remember, that, that was the only tribe that stood up for Moses and God in the golden calf incident. Well, they were the priests, right? Right. So, right. well, they they were the priests, and then God made them the official priests on that day. Gotcha. Okay. So he would Be take care of them. Right. Because remember, before that, God told, um, I think God told Moses that you'll be a tribe of, you'll be a nation of priests. Isn't that funny? Because you being a pastor, I have never felt we needed anything. Everything's been, God's yeah. taken care of us. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like the same thing? I like to think so. I do too. I like okay. to think so. 
okay, so back on track. Um, so he's getting ready to start dividing the land. So now we're talking about the division of the land east of Jordan. The other half of Manasseh, um, and some, some versions of the Bible say with the other half of Manasseh, the Reubenites and Gadites had received an inheritance from Moses, given them east of the Jordan. So that's um, what we've kind of already discussed. Uh, we really the, needed a map. Ah, that's why we have the maps in our handouts. Yeah, we have okay. that. <laughs> okay, and I'm away from home, oh. so I'm going to have to look that I felt like when I was reading it, I was at home, you know, kind uh -huh. of, where, well, you go to this, you know, feed sign and turn right and, and <laughs> go to that pond and, you know, as they surveyed and they talked about that. Uh -huh. it, it wasn't really like what we do today, survey. Okay. Oh, it's okay. backwards. I just, I just sent them to you. Okay, Love perfect. It. Great. Okay, good. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, because, um, Chris, I, I had the same problem. I'm a, a very visual person, so as I read it, I like to see it also. So these maps help out. Yeah. Uh, where was I? Uh, this was what oh, was oh, 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 um, verse, uh, verses 9 and 10. So it extended from, of course, we don't know how it's pronounced, Aror in, on the rim of the Arnon Gorge, and from the town in the middle of the gorge, and included the whole plateau of Mediba as far as Deban, and all the towns of Sihon, king of the Amorites, blah, 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 blah. So the point is, not only did God give the Israelites the promised land, he gave them all the towns, all the farms, all the vineyards that were already um, established. So this is a really big deal. And um, that's, that's what God told uh, Moses back in Deuteronomy. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you a land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, and here comes the warning, because God knows that once the Israelites get comfortable, just like people in the U.S., they're not going to need God. So God tells Moses in verse 12 of Deuteronomy chapter 6, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So back in Deuteronomy, God told Moses, I'm not only going to give you land, I'm going to give you cities and vineyards and olive groves, and you get to have all that good stuff, and you didn't do any of the work. So that's a huge, big deal. Um, and then here's the start of their problems in verse 13. But the Israelites did not drive out the people of Geshur and Makkah, so they continue to live among the Israelites to this day. And we know that whenever the, the Canaanites are mixing with the Israelites, there's going to be trouble for the Israelites because they're going to forget God, they're going to start falling away. So that's problem number one. Verse Is that probably why in verse uh, 1 of 13 very large area of land to be taken over yet well he I, hadn't finished the job yeah i i think that part gary is um where verse six comes in because god tells them i myself will drive them out before the israelites so in verse one of chapter 13 uh, when god says there's still very large areas of land to be taken over he says, don't worry, I'll do it myself. So I think that's where that comes in. Okay. Um, and then we get to the, the first mention of the, the Levites in verse 14. But to the tribe of Levi he gave no inheritance, since the food offerings presented to the Lord, the God of Israel, are their inheritance as he promised them. And this was the promise that God made in Deuteronomy, where he told them that, you guys are going to have the food 
the food offerings that come into the temple. So that's how they get most of their food. But they do still have some um, herbs that they keep. Right here. In verse 15, this is uh, what Moses had given to the tribe of Reuben. And then he describes the, the territory. Um, and then he goes to the listing of some of the people that got wiped out in order to provide this land. And then we, we see Balaam. Where did we hear, hear of Balaam before? Oh, yeah, he was the nasty guy. Right. I remember him. He was the one who's supposed to curse the Israelites, remember? Right. And he couldn't do it. So as a refresher, we have a supplement called the Book of Balaam. And this is another instance where um, the things that are discussed in the Bible are documented by um, extra literature. So this Book of Balaam was written about Balaam um, at that time. It's not in the Bible. It explains who he was, how he was a great sorcerer, and he was very popular. So, hmm. even appeared in Revelations. I can't give you the verse and chapter, but where did we? Was it back in uh, Leviticus we had Balaam? Back in Numbers. Numbers. Okay. Numbers. Yeah. So read that uh, book of Balaam when you get a chance. Uh, I'll name my donkey after him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Balaam's donkey. <laughs> Oh, that's where he turns and talks to him. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. because Balaam is beating the donkey, and the donkey's just trying to save Balaam's life. And the donkey turns and says something to yeah, him. Yeah, the, the talking donkey. Yeah, yeah. the talkie donkey, yeah. The, the <laughs> talkie donkey, donkey. donkey. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which you would kind of expect from a sorcerer, right? Right. Well, yeah. If anybody's going to have a talking donkey, it's going to be a sorcerer. Okay, so uh, I verse... about the talking donkey. Yeah, verse 23. <laughs> So, so Chris, if you if you want to catch up on the Bible studies, every Bible one-on-one -on -one study we've ever done is on the website. So if things are really slow down in Florida, you can just <laughs> watch hours and hours. You can binge on Bible one-on-one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. On, so, a on a rainy day. On a rainy day, yeah. yeah. It's been cold here, so we've been inside. Um, what's cold? Yeah, what's cold? 60. Oh, oh yes. I can feel the And Wendy. <laughs> but don't do it on your husband's birthday. I won't. The poor lizards are falling out of the tree. <laughs> yes, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, when it gets cold, yeah. yeah. They just go dormant. Lizard sickles? Lizard sickles. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't die. They just, they when just it warms up, they re Oh, okay. So the lands we just heard about um, and given to the Reubenites, all that land was all desert. Now, why would God give one of the clans all desert? This was Reuben. Oh, he was the rotten son. He was the <laughs> bad boy. He was the bad boy. Uh -huh. In Genesis chapter 49, we hear, Reuben, this is Jacob talking to him, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, the first sign of my strength, excelling in honor, excelling in power. Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel, for you went up onto your father's bed, onto my couch and defiled it. Oh, that's right. He slept with somebody. He slept with his mother. Yes. So that's why he gets desert. Not dessert. He gets desert. Okay. Same. Or just dessert. <laughs> or, or his just desserts, yeah. yeah. Or his just desserts. Boom. Okay, Sorry, there we man. go. Okay. Karen's sure all week, folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, she feels like it. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. And then verse 33, we, we hear again, because he's got to remind us, but to the tribe of Levi, Moses had given no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance as he promised them. So is he like nomads? No, no. We're going to find out later in, in Joshua that they don't get their own land, but they get cities in each tribe's land. Oh. So they can minister to the people. Oh. Okay. Okay. So they get they get uh, towns in the land 
and they get some pasture land too. Okay. So we'll hear about that later. So Joshua 14, the division of the land west of the Jordan. So the, the two and a half tribes are taken care of on the east. Now we're getting to the west. Verse 1. Now these are the areas the Israelites received as an inheritance in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the tribal clans of Israel allotted them. I saw Eleazar the priest, and I saw, holy moly, we've seen this guy for a long time. So the, the first time we saw Eleazar was back in Leviticus. And remember, he's the, the third son of Aaron. Remember, um, the Aaron, first two died. First two died, right. Mm -hmm. Because they, they messed up, they used the wrong um, fire. They were drunk. And they were drunk. Yeah. Yep, and they were drunk. So that's why they got the provision that the priests can't drink. So when those first two got killed, Eleazar became the high priest, and he's still around now at least until the end of um, Joshua. So there's a supplement that talks about him. Uh, it's called Eleazar, the uh, second high priest. So I wonder how old he was when he became the high priest. Oh, he could I have been 10, 12? No, no. I mean, he's still around. Yeah, he's still around, but I think it's in, let's see here real quick. Uh, Want me to Google it? Mm, yeah, maybe. Because I, I just scanned the uh, supplement real quick. I can't find it. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So that's Eleazar. Been around for quite a while. And verse 4. For Joseph's descendants had become two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim. Okay, that's because they were adopted by Jacob. The Levites received no share of the land, but only towns to live in with pasture lands for the flocks and herds. So, um, I don't think that's true. Oh, and in the footnote I have that the Levites were given no land east or west of the Jordan, but they settled in the towns with each of the tribes so they could minister to them, just like, uh, just like priests and pastors today. So the Israelites divided the land just as the Lord had commanded Moses. So back in Numbers, God told Moses how the land should be divided. And he was very specific. And now they're doing the actual allocation according to God's design. Now, allotment for Caleb. Caleb doesn't have his own tribe. But why did God give Caleb a special allotment?